Hallelujah. I don't know who you clap for, but let's clap now for Jesus. Please. Glory be to God. Amen. We go straight to our congregation of Him. How great is our God at this time? Hallelujah. How great is our God? Minister Jem knew that. Do you? Let's sing together. The splendor of working.
so much. Thank you so much. And now we go into our scripture reading. God, to give God the glory today. I've heard the brother sing earlier. This is the Lord's day. And indeed it is because I stand here as a commandment keeper, as a Seventh-day Adventist, and it is indeed a high day in this place today as we celebrate the life of my dear sister, who I never knew was, was a minister. However, as the eldest one, she set an example for our siblings. I follow differently, as I say. I stand there as a saint and as one that keeps the commandment of God and have the faith of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is my big brother. If I can indulge your patience as I sit here, it just dawned on me that after my sister, my eldest brother who is not here for reasons which I don't know, it's the next eldest in the family after my aunt. And since he's not here, I realized that I am the next in line. So here I stand as a believer. We don't believe in speaking to the dead. Therefore, I shall read you the word of God as a witness to all who are alive in this place today. I shall read from you Revelation chapter 6 starting at verse 6 and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation kindred tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made the heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed, saying, followed them, saying, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here is the prayer of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So let my sister rest in the Lord. And as my brother said, our works do follow. 
Revelation chapter 13, 17. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the prayer or the patience of the saints and the faith of the saints. Revelation chapter 12, 17. And the dragon, the devil, was wrought with the woman, the church, and went to make war with the remnant of our seed, the church, our seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends the reading of the word of God. I have read you what is considered the three angels' messages and the truth pertaining to it as a witness for these last times. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Howard. And now we go to the special selection. song for everyone that Jen inspired. I'm glad she was still here. I'm playing the instrument a lot.
me introduce myself. My name is Beverly Somerset. Most of you might have known me because all the funerals I attend, I know all them churches in Guyana, all the burial grounds, all the parliament, all the drivers to the ambulance, etc. Because I am the GF ex soldiers welfare officer. Okay? And I feel proud coming out here and giving my fellow soldier the rights. I could have been home today, Saturday, doing my also call. We have five ex soldiers died. Four are women. When I finish here, Monday and next one, Thursday, another one, I go on and on. And my taxi says she don't tire. No! I serve my country. And by right, we must get our last right. We must be treated as patriotic Guyanese in this country. That's why I make myself available. Me go by a friend of mine, you know. Can't get by a friend of mine, I'm not trying to come out and drink. I was on that door, cooking food, laying table and washing the clothes. So I'm not trying to do. I'm looking after my mother's soldier. The other thing I want you to know, most of you must not know. Have respect for our golden highway. When our soldier being draped with this flag, you might not know. The flag don't come off until the reach is gone. That is the last right. The bugle has to sound our last pulse. Okay? So you might not know as civilians. The flag has to be delivered. However, there is a drill. When it's ready for viewing, we, we should take it off. It's a drill in doing so. And then we put it on back. Okay? okay? I've known Jim for a, a long period of time because I was a training instructor to come on for 30 years. Training soldiers, men and women. And I gave the men them a hard time. <laughs> Okay? Women, let me tell y'all something. You could do anything and everything. When the men coming for boxing, pick up a box. Look for the most obvious thing I last time with it. I'm the first woman that climbed the mountain in this country. 6,700 feet high. Some men could only crawl up the bed. Then I have known Jim for a long time as a medic. She always with a smile. She did her work in a professional order. She did several courses in the Guy Defense Force. It isn't easy to attain a sergeant rank. When we look at the medals, because of the time she spent, okay, she did not achieve all her medals. You notice me with a lot of medals. This is a national award medal. I'm a national award. And these medals is what I attained in Guyan Pesos. Okay? She was a pleasant woman. As I said, she used to do her work in a professional order. She did several courses in the Guy Defense Source. You have to do courses to attain your rank. You have to be disciplined to attain that rank. It's not easy. It's that why I respect and I'm sorry for my men, soldier. You know why? When they go to the border, looking after our border, another man they are looking after their border. <laughs> you understand me? We must respect our men and women who serve this country. This is not easy leaving your children at home. 
form to go and say you going to match my somebody back to mouse and you're going to look after the bad and the Venezuelans are still trying to come in. Y'all understand me? So we must respect them, not only the soldiers, but the police, even though some of them might be called. Can't talk. Okay? Respect our people, men and women who serve this country. Other than doing our courses, she works at various locations. She works at Takama, Jaguar Company, PY Company, Supports Company, Training Corps, and other companies. When I said she works in this area, she works as a medic, but she has to go to those locations. I use some of my advice, right, my mama? You have to go to locations to perform our duty as a medic. Okay? It's not only in Angano. They try, they move you around. You're not staying from one place at a time. All like for me, I was a training instructor. I spent 30 years in Takama training men and women. And I used to get in there and doing it. Okay? It's not easy to train a man and a woman who come from several life. Not to pass from the military. You got to go to make up your bed, you got to go for cook. And when you make up your bed, like don't put it guy like don't have to tell Sean. So when you get up, your bed sheet's still smooth. Huh? You got to know to cook. You got some men out there that don't know to cook. You got to know to cook because when you go to the bottle, you get some little wife and sweet to wear a side check, and that will be your food. So you got to know to cook. Okay? I'm confused. I just come to tell you how it is. Where the skill is from. I got it easy. And she worked very hard. Okay? Amen. So I want to extend condolences Thank to you. her family and friends. On behalf of the Chief of Staff, the President of the Ghana Veterans Legion, Officers and the rank of the GDF, officers and the ranks of the Ghana Veterans Legion. I'd like to extend my condolences to the family and friends of Jim. May our soul rest in peace. Thank you. Kofi Harris, I'll come in this quick. Jim my big sister, she's very strict. Every one of us. And I think the reason why mom had six other kids, so John was the adult. And when she was mom, my mom was at work. So she never really had time to play with you know with, with, with her other kids. So she's always being mom. And she's like uh first she's my sister but also like a mom because she treats me like she's my mom. She always just say I'm, I'm spoiled. My mom was me. And when I was little, then my mom used to argue because mom used to give me a lot, you know, a lot of stuff. And Jen would say, no, he's spoiling coffee. So I used to not eat food, just eat porridge of me. And Jen wanted me to eat vegetables. And one day I went to the house, to her house, to spend the weekend. And John gave me vegetables to eat, and I refused to eat it. So for two days, Saturday and Sunday, I had no food to eat, just had to go home, just had regular stuff in the house. Because she, she said, I'm like your mom, you eat what I cook. So after that, I never went back to the house to spend the weekend. You know, because she's very strict, but she's very loving. And growing up, I left when I came to America, and she called me, text me, well, call, and write at that time. And after she moved to St. Lucia, and we still come back all the time. And after I think I was in my twenties, I invited her to come over for um, she had a visa from St. Lucia, I said invite her to come to America and stay with us for a couple, I think she spent maybe like three weeks at the house. 
and she cooked, and no, she did cook at that time. I, eat, I didn't eat the food she cooked anyway. We, we, we were no vegetables. <laughs> so she, and she, she, she baked, and every now my sister would bake and I good. So I enjoyed her cooking and stuff. And she went back home, and we stayed in contact, and I keep insisting that she come to America for a better opportunity. And she didn't want to, but she ended up taking a leap of faith and came over. And she started working, and then she, I think at that time, she decided to, I guess she finally got or she baptized, and she went to the church. But every day, she would pray for me. And every morning at 5 o'clock, she would text me and send me a text, pray, you know, praising God and stuff like that. And she always wanted me to go to church. So a couple of times I did go to church with her. You know, and she keep insisting that I stay in the church. And Carol would know sometimes, well, they pray parties on the, on the phone. So many times when they would be in the, in the prayer group. I guess she was always going to pray for me, you know, so. And she also, she prayed for a lot of people. I think my sister, instead of taking care of herself, she take care of everyone else. That's what she gave. She gave herself to everyone. And I could see why she wanted to come back home. Because this is, this is lovely, and I guess this is, this is our home. So when she got sick, she know she always wanted to be back home. So regardless of what, Jump fight to come back. The past couple months, she did fight. She fight a hard fight, and she's a fighter. Yeah. Yeah, so as I said before, like I did this same thing two days ago, so I'm doing it again. You know, it's kind it's kind of hard, but I just want to, you know, she, she did fight, and I know she was God. I know for sure she was God, but she, you know, she's a woman of God. You know, always preach and talk about God, no matter what. So my sister. I want you to rest in peace, and I love you, and see you on the other side. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Principality and powers against this rule, against this world of iniquity, and to follow in high places, against wickedness in high places, to follow, I present peace for you. Next, to follow. If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from them and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That sounds of how great a word. Because of time I, I don't really want how great a word, but I can mention that God is good and great. Amen. And we must not be for God within our lives. God must be ever present. Amen. I have an experience, and uh, we all know today, we call the country wearing masks. Wearing masks as a solution. Well, I went to a sales department and I called the, the sales person to me. Wearing a mask, what do you want? I told her, what do you want to put on an extra to her? What do you want? I told her, she could hear me. I took off the mask. And I told her what I want. She heard me. And I was so. But I'm wearing masks. I, to myself, it's not the same. Wearing masks. The harm of God and the best place of righteousness, that is the mask we ought to be wearing. Yes, yes. God must be centered yes. in our hearts. Yes. Every day. Pray unto God. Do not forget to pray to God. Call upon God. As the situation is, and from my experience, once again I was in my home. I have a container which I place groceries. And I, from time to time, would clean that container. And I went to clean that container that day. And before I went, I called upon God. But in doing so, a force came to me to plunge me down into a tub of water. I said, God didn't make me fall. I said, I said to myself, my God, my God, my God. Why? When the enemy comes in like a rushing wind, and the servant of God ages around you, God would not allow them to defeat you. God conquered them that day because he was present. And I know that my God is real, and I wouldn't turn away from my God. Keep on holding to God, holding on to God. 
That is what I will answer. That I will say, how great the word. God is good and is great. He can save, he can deliver. Let's put our trust in God. Yeah. Finally, thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. These are all things. We have got to be true to God today. Trueness is what God desires of people. That's, and finally, finally, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are good, and report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, sing on these things. These are things that we have, we have to be true to God. Pureness, trueness, wholeness, peace, God desires these things. God wants to give us good, but there are things flowing in the air today. People getting involved in situation, not me. When it is all done, you wonder to yourself, how did this happen? Do not be for God, not only when something happens. Oh God. Don't wait for that thing. Always give a word to God. The first thing you wake in the morning, call upon God. Today, mankind came and said to me, God, but I know that you for God is the God, and that is my God. He's forever. The, the Alpha, the Omega, the Big Man, the M. Jew for God. And let us give God all today. My niece is gone. She's resting there. But I can see that she's safe in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And I see we have a song. Sleep on. She's sleeping there. You love, we love her. But the safe will love her best. Yes. And I know she's safe in his hand. And I thank God. And I encourage everyone. Don't let us be for God. Always call upon God. Let God be our own. Right. Amen. Thank you. A great woman and servant of the Lord. And while we must be sad, we must grieve. It's a normal and natural part of our Just telling her that this human is existence. Started and you're gonna be maybe a I'm certain that Minister Chairman yeah. would want us, despite the circumstances, or in spite of the circumstances to rejoice in the Lord yeah, check your message, please. because she has transitioned to be with her Lord and her Savior. Sergeant, well, former Sergeant, with me, Patricia Beard, Amsterdam. I will miss her. I will miss her. After my mom went to be with the Lord in, in uh, May of 2020, and um, at the height of the pandemic, I relied on her in many ways. I called on her to assist in prayer. I called on her to assist in the area of deliverance. I called on her during our Bible study time. And um, she always responded. Many times she would say, Pastor, the people are so quiet, they're not saying anything in the Bible study. And um, she would say, you know, I don't know everything, but this under harsh conditions in a Roman jail. He's soon to be executed. Like the prophet um, Jeremiah, Paul also finds himself facing discouraging circumstances at the end of his, of his life. And even as you consider Minister German, the circumstances under which at the end of her life were not exactly the best. And so Paul finds himself facing discouraging circumstances at this point in his, in his life. Nevertheless, he recognized that his own destiny was secure and his work on earth was complete. And the rest was in the hands of our Lord and Savior. And so in these circumstances, Paul offers to us what are considered some final instructions, some, uh, uh, which form a part of his legacy, some final thoughts he provides to this young minister called Timothy and, and the churches that were being persecuted at that point in time. He provides to them um, some wise counsel as to how to continue to live. And he says to them in, in 2 Timothy 4, he says, For I am already poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the feet. 
Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. Not only me, but also all who have longed for his appearing. I have fought the good fight, were his words, or part of his words, the first part of his statement. I have fought the good fight. Every one of us today is engaged in some battle or the other. Um, at this moment, some of us, the battle may be how we make it through this, this service and how we make it through this day, how we make it through tomorrow. Some others, with the greatest respect, I would say, have, I would want to say, some greater battles, probably battles in your, your life, battles in your body, battles with your family, um, battles with just how you make it to the next day. As the Apostle provides us with a final piece of advice to his prodigy, he says that I have fought the good fight. Note he did not say that I have fought a good fight, but he says that I have fought the good fight. Because a good fight could mean that there is another time, another opportunity, there is another fight. But Paul clearly understood that, the, that there are many battles in this sojourn on the earth, but there is only one that is fundamental and one that should engage most of his time and his attention, his talent, his resources, his ability. The battle that, uh, the, the battle that Paul describes as offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, one that is holy, one that is pleasing, one that is acceptable in the sight of the Lord, which Paul says is our reason of a service. And so as we gather here today to, to reflect on the life of Minister Gemma, to celebrate our life, one question I want to start by asking you today is are you in the right fight? Are you in the right battle? You know, you could be a skilled fighter, you could be a skilled uh, warrior, but you could be in the wrong battle. Yeah. Minister Jim had an unenviable, sorry, an enviable understanding of what fights to be in. She had an enviable understanding of what the battle was. She understood when Paul says that we, str we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers. She understood that the weapons of our warfare, they were not carnal weapons, but they were weapons that were supernatural, the weapons that were mighty to the pulling down of stronghold. And I noticed that as even as we spoke, as, as the, the writer of the eulogy, she said that, that, uh, that you know, Minister Jem was a, was, was a prayer warrior extraordinaire. Well, those are my words, and I, I, I had that in mind even before I saw it in the eulogy. She was a prayer warrior extraordinaire. Any time, any place, any battle that related to prayer, she was there, she was ready. You just call upon her, and she was ready and willing to pray. She understood the fight. She understood the battle. She didn't get involved in the little snick snacks and, and was being, no, she wasn't being able like a chicken dealer with the spit of stuff on the ground. No, she was fighting in the air with the eagles. She was fighting with the best. She was fighting to ensure the kingdom of God was advanced. Amen. You know, here, you don't have, have, have a record of her being involved in this little talk and this little gossip and this little gaff here and all that. No, 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 no. As Sister Sandra clearly said, she said, no, keep those people name out your mouth. <laughs> she was special forces. She was the one, she was those who you consider skilled and uh, the most skilled and trained operators. She was one who went into the, in, in, into, into the most, uh, the, 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 the hottest part of the battle because she understood the battle. She had a secret place with God. When you met with her, you knew that she met with God and as she stood before you and she would eye you up. And with her eyes in the, in the, in the realm of the spirit, she is, she, is, she, is, she is scanning you. And then she would ask you a few questions and then you may be, I may be, or someone may be away off and you would see the person standing there and they begin to nod their head. Because she was un she understood what God was speaking to, how God was speaking to that person. She understood what God wanted to say to that person. She was prophetic and she was a minister of deliverance. She was a wife, a mother, a friend. She was a, a, a confidant. She was a leader. She was an awesome woman who understood what fights she had to be in. And she ensured that she was fighting the right fight. In many of the circumstances over the last... Um, Many of our conversations over the last 10 plus months, our constant refrain was Pastor Kenya fighting. A fighting. A fighting. And she didn't say it in a manner that, uh, in, in, in a hopeless manner. But she said it with a, in a manner, with, it, it said it with, with, with all confidence in the Lord that the Lord was going to 
do what he alone could do. She didn't fight any fight.
everything, there is a season, a time to every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, that which was planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. We've gathered here to commit to rest the body of our loved one and friend. Here is the form of one whose memories we will treasure. Some of us shared through these passing years wonderful companionship. Let us cherish the memories that each of us here purpose to sing the Lord with all of our hearts opportunities for salvation extended to us through God's grace. For as much as it pleased the Lord Almighty to take out of this world the soul of Waveney Patricia Amsterdam, we therefore